All right, here's another example of a syllogism. Um, so here's a uh, uh, second one. Some m is not p, all m are p, therefore some p is not s. So there's an important strategy that you need to uh, know uh, to, to do these correctly. And that is this. When we're considering the premises, here are our premises, here's the conclusion, um, you should always diagram the universal statements first, right? So the state universal statements are the statements that contain the word all or no, right? Any statement that contains the word some is a particular statement. So we need to diagram the universal statements first. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start, even though this is the second premise, I'm going to start with it first in, uh, in our uh, Venn diagram. So all M R P. How do we represent that? All M R P. That means anything that is an M, anything in the category of M, is also in the category of P, which means that there's nothing in, out, in the category of M that's outside of the category P. So how do we represent that? Well, like this. <clears throat> I'm going to shade out anything whoops, in the M category that's not in the P category. Sorry, this is messy. Um, so there's the... Uh, statement all M are P. Right? Now let's go back to our first premise, the particular statement, some M is not S. Alright, what does that look like? Well there's something that is an M that is not an S. So it has to be within the uh, M category and it has to be outside of the S category, right? So we know it has to be in here, but it also can't be in here, right? Uh, so I'm just going to put a little asterisk here. Whoops. Sorry. There's our asterisk. And there we go. All right, so here's where the asterisk goes, anywhere here. Now the question is, well, why, why shouldn't I put it on the line? Well, it can't go on the line because we know based on our, our previous uh, universal statement, that there's, no, there's no M, there's nothing that is an M that's outside of the category of P. That means our asterisk has to belong inside the category of P, like this, right? So there is the correct way to diagram these premises. Some M is not S, and all M are P. All right, so let's go back to our syllogism and diagram the conclusion now. Some P is not S. Some P is not S. Alright, so that means there's something that's in the category of P but not in the category of S. And so the asterisk which represents the individual should go right here. Anywhere, anywhere here. It just, it can't go here because then that's something that's a P and that's also an S, but we're saying something is a P but is not an S. Um, so now the question is this. Um, does my conclusion statement, some P is not S, uh, contain any, does that contain any more information than is contained in the premises? Um, and my premise also contains the information that there's some P, here's the P, that's outside of the category of S, right? So what does that mean? That, that means my conclusion statement doesn't contain any further information than, my, than is contained in the premises, right? And that means that this argument from these two premises to this conclusion is valid, right? 